Okay, so in today's uh, presentation, we have Clara and Kay from the Digital Medical Initiative that will explain to us very briefly, so it's not a long video, will explain to us mm -hmm. what the benefits are of the different programs that are available right now that might be able to assist your business. And this video is specifically talking to members of the Manitoba Southeast Commerce Group. So Kay and Clara, if you want to introduce yourselves and then go straight into the presentation, that'd be awesome. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Mark. And welcome to those who are watching. Uh, this is a program offered through the Manitoba Chambers of Commerce. Uh, I am Kay Gardner. I am the program director and I've been with the Chambers of Commerce for two years, specifically to work on programs and initiatives around business transformation with technology. Uh, so the Digital Manitoba Initiative runs the Digital Services Program. That's a mouthful, I know. But uh, to make the uh, process straightforward and give you support, we have a great team. Uh, joining me today is Clara Bulo, and not available to be on this webinar, but very important to our team is Isaka Nadaro. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself, Clara? everyone really happy to be here today i'm clara bulo the account manager with the digital manitoba initiative i've been working with the digital services program since it launched and am the main point of contact for companies who participate in the program or who have any questions about what we do and why we do it so i'll pass this back over to Kay. okay so we're just going to do a brief PowerPoint presentation, talk a little bit about it and get right into the nuts and bolts of the program. But really the background is that year after year we've seen what an impact digital technology has on businesses across sectors. Uh, last year we hosted a breakfast at the chamber and uh, the vice president of BDC was there and touched on these points as well. It's not just a Manitoba issue, it is across the planet. Businesses are becoming and having to become more digitally savvy. Um, the challenge though at the chambers is that we've been asking companies what are what are business challenges and then we've been asking ourselves what can we do about it? How can we help? So one of the biggest things we heard from companies is there's a lot of companies willing, able, needing to do technology transformations and changes but there were many questions about where do I start, how much do I need to spend, who do I trust, and so that is really how the digital services program was born, if you will. Um, basically, we um, got funding from Prairies Can in 2021 and worked with 100 companies, and in 2023, got funding from um, the province of Manitoba to continue the program because we had had such good feedback from the first hundred. So we have three specialized streams of service for this program, uh, and Clara will go into a deeper dive of each of them. As Kay said, the program was designed to encourage and support Manitoba businesses in their business technology journey. So each of these three service streams, which I'll go into in greater detail, uh, but we have the business technology assessment, cybersecurity audits, and digital legal services um, were designed to really fit the needs of what we heard from the from Manitobans who are looking to grow their technology infrastructure or see really where they were at. So companies are paired with a digital service provider who's an expert in each of these specific areas, and um, they work with them to deliver these services. So the first one we offer is the business technology assessment, or the BTA is how we refer to it, and you'll hear us say that throughout this presentation, and maybe in some of our marketing materials as well, if you get those. Um, so this assessment really works to provide a clear picture of where a company stands in terms of technology. It helps owners and executives make informed decisions, and it enhances efficiency and productivity. We find it's best for businesses who are looking to optim optimize their operations, enhance efficiency, and really leverage their technology effectively. The next service stream we have is cybersecurity audits. It is what it sounds like. It's an audit of your cybersecurity infrastructure and um, really addresses and assesses your vulnerabilities. It provides recommendations. It bolsters, like in order to bolster your defenses. And then, I mean, with the prevalence of cyber threats, increasing data breaches, it really is a, a top priority 
for businesses within every industry. So it's best for businesses that collect, store, or process any sensitive information, including personal data, proprietary info, but really it it's kind of good for everybody across sectors. If you have if you do something online, a cybersecurity audit could be a great fit for your business just to see where you stand. And last but not least, we have the digital legal services stream. So this stream pairs businesses with legal counsel to draft one of three documents, a privacy policy, terms of use, or an end user license agreement, EULA for short. So this is best for businesses with an online presence or a software as a service SaaS platform who have not had a privacy policy drafted uh, by legal counsel. Same goes for terms of use or end user license agreement. Most businesses look at a competitor, take that, change a few words here and there. That's great, you have something, but this just gives you that confidence and um, really elevates your business to protect itself in the digital landscape. So highly recommend that if you don't have these documents drafted, they're becoming more and more important and more and more, well, I said important, but more essential to have if you have a website or an app. So each of these service streams has a similar but slightly different eligibility criteria. First and foremost, across the board, you have to be owned and operated in Manitoba. You also have to be registered with the Manitoba Companies Office and been in operation since April 1st, 2021 or earlier. The reason we say you have to have been in business a little while is that you're not going to get the same impact on these excuse me, reports or recommendations if you're a startup or you're just you're just starting your business. You really need a bit of data to look into and to see where you are and where you want to go. So we also ask that you're able to demonstrate that your business has spent a minimum of 3500 in building digital capacity since April 1st, 2022. <laughs> excuse me. I'm just getting over a bit of a cold, like many people in Manitoba at this time. So excuse my coughing. Um, we ask this because a lot of these reports come with making some changes, and we want to know that you're willing to invest and that you have in the past. We ask for the BTA and the cybersecurity audit that you have a minimum of five full-time equivalent staff. Why is this important? Same as being in business for at least a few years. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna have a sip of water. Why don't I take over, Clara, and you okay. can uh, go off for a little bit. Sorry <laughs> about you. that, folks. Um, yeah, the the minimum equivalent staff is because at a certain size is when the business technology audit and the cybersecurity audit will be meaningful. If you don't have um, more complex systems, the data that you get from these audits is uh, is not helpful to your business. So that is uh, one of the criteria for sure. And then um, that is slightly different for the digital legal services. So you could be a business of two or more people and the digital legal documents will still be um, effective for your business. So that is the minimum quantity for the digital legal services. Thank you, Kay. Uh, now I'm going to tell you all how you can apply. Um, so it's a pretty streamlined application process. Um, you create an account on our platform, which we'll share a link to uh, at the end of this presentation. And you go through the eligibility criteria, and then you're asked to fill out your application form. The two documents that are really important that you kind of have gathered before you start that process is your company's office file summary. If you don't know how to get at that, don't worry. Um, we have a short explainer video on our website that takes you through the process. You also need proof of staff. We ask with that, please do not include your SIN numbers or any very personal information. We do delete those after approval, but best bet is please don't include that stuff. Um, so once you've filled out that application form, it takes about 20 minutes tops, very streamlined. If anything, um, comes up, you can always reach out to me and I'll help you out throughout the process. We're here to support, but it goes into uh, the screening interview round. So if your application looks good, 
our team has reviewed it, you'll receive notification that it's time to schedule a screening interview. We like to talk with every company we work with um, multiple times throughout this process just to make sure that um, you're able to take advantage of the service, you know exactly what you're getting, and that you can answer any questions you might have. So that 15 minute screening interview is just a bit of more of a deep dive into your business. Uh, we pair you with a service provider if uh, your company is a good fit for the program and we talk about next steps. So then after approval, you'll sign a statement of work, which is attached to your um, application form. All the instructions are in the email and you'll book an onboarding meeting. That onboarding meeting is about 30 minutes, give or take. And that's when you're introduced to the digital service provider that you'll be paired with and uh, off to the races. So you'll get started on the actual work product. Afterwards, um, we get notified when that report is finished or you have the terms of use privacy policy you let in your hand. And then we reach out to do an exit survey and interview. So that exit survey, very short, we're really looking to measure the economic impact this has on Manitoba businesses. Kay said earlier, we're funded by the province of Manitoba. So you report back to us, we report back to them. All information is shared in aggregate, and it gives us a great chance to touch base with you as well to see what you thought of the program. Do you have any recommendations? How has this changed your thought process on what digital means for your business and that kind of a thing? So we're really open to feedback and we love to hear from you. So that's the program in a nutshell. I'm going to pass this back to Kay so she can talk about the impact we've seen on Manitoba businesses to date. Thanks, Clara. I think a couple of things I did want to touch on just so you know, no money, you have to spend no money on this program. Once you're accepted, the service provider does the service for you. You get your report or your document and we pay the service provider directly. So it's not something that you pay forward and then have to be reimbursed. So just to be clear on that. Um, we have worked with 120 companies uh, since we started, and they're, as you can see, uh, varying sizes, but mostly SMEs, but from all around the province and across sectors. So it's been interesting to see how that effect has been. And, as Clara mentioned with the exit interview, part of what's great about that is getting the feedback. So we've heard stuff about increased confidence about moving forward. We've heard that it helped companies work better with their uh, service provider. They might have an MSP they work with or their team internally. Um, we've heard that it's added clarity to where they're going and what's first um, or supported business decisions that may be some one person in the company held, but someone else wasn't so sure. Uh, there's been a lot about benchmarking cybersecurity, you know, figuring out where they stand and what they want to do. Um, so really, this is about your business and what you need. These reports are to help give you some um, confidence in moving forward. And um, really, we encourage you to apply if you fit the eligibility criteria and to reach out to us. We are very happy to um, to talk to you and we're very excited about um, the growth of Manitoba businesses. And how you can apply for the program is visiting our website at digitalmanitobainitiative.ca slash programs. And um, there's an apply now button. So click that and you're able to fill out the application form. So I think we're gonna go to a Q&A now. I think Mark had a question. If you wanna come back on Mark. Yeah, so the question I would have for our members is, are, is there any other programs that would prevent a Manitoba-based business to apply? For example, many of our members already have benefited or are going through the CDEP program, the Canadian Digital Adoption Program. Does that interfere, prevent, or complement what the Digital Manitoba Initiative Program offers? That's a, that's a very good point, Mark. Um, I think the it'll vary from person to person what they're already getting through the CDAP program and which of the services they might like to do from us because they might um, want to. But there's nothing to prevent companies from doing both programs at all. In fact, they could be quite complementary in many ways. And it also wouldn't matter which one you started with. You could start with our program and then move into CDAP or you could be already doing CDEP and still be part of our program. So I think that um, that's really a benefit for companies if they choose to use that. 
for sure. Is it accurate? I think I heard you say this, but I just want to confirm. So the DMI program is 100% funded, whereas the CDAP program is about 90% funded. Is that correct. accurate? Okay. That is correct. And the amount of funding from DMI is how much? So there isn't an amount per se because each service costs something a little bit different. Okay. So I would say that you're getting somewhere in value between $5,000 to $10,000 of value depending on the business and depending on the service you take advantage of. But that, but that, those bills come to us. You don't have to put it forward and then be reimbursed. And it's 100%. Excellent. So there, I mean, there are some limitations then, of course, too, like on the digital legal services. You couldn't come to us if you were, I don't know, a Northwest company and want digital legal advice on all your assets yeah. across the globe, right? We can't cover that. We have certain criteria, but within that criteria, it's 100% for sure. So, so I think it's a no brainer for companies to at least apply for it and go through the process. And if you can uncover something that can benefit, like one of the things that I would like to point out is a lot of companies may not have privacy policy terms of use and user license agreements. Those things could put them in a liability situation in the future. So that's a no brainer there, in my opinion. And of course, just to continue like continue on their you know business techno technology journey and improving their digital capacity. Those are all things that are going to give our Manitoba businesses a competitive advantage. So um, exactly. hundred percent agreed. Yeah. yeah. We're big so supporters. big thank you for for Kay and Clara for having given this uh, presentation today. Any closing comments uh, before we finish the recording? I don't think so. I think you summed it up well. This is absolutely yeah. what we want to is uh, to continue Manitoba companies being growing and being more competitive. Awesome. Yeah. So all of the the uh, links will be appended on the bottom of this video when you guys are viewing yeah. this video. And if there's any questions. Um, feel free to call me at the Southeast Commerce Group or to go directly to the DMI team, which is just awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much for having us, Mark. It's been a pleasure to talk to all of you, and uh, I hope I see some applications come through. Me too. Exciting. Thank Take you. care.